All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is talking about cricothyrotomy. And the reasons why we'd wanna do a cricothyrotomy is because we are unable to obtain an airway any other way. So we've tried maybe intubating the patient, we've already tried ventilating the patient, nothing is working at all. So we're gonna be criking. Now, some materials that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a scalpel, you're gonna need a 6O tube, or a, some sort of crike kit that comes with the tube. You're gonna need a 10 ml syringe. You're gonna need something to hopefully hold this thing down, either tape or if it comes with some sort of commercial device, um, that would be preferred. But I don't have either, I don't, either of those, so we'll make do. So the first thing that we wanna do is find our landmarks. This is our first contraindication if we're unable to find our landmarks and we can't crike. Now what we're feeling for is called our crico thyroid membrane. Now your Adam's apple, also known as your thyroid cartilage, is what you feel superior to the patient's trachea. So this large lump here at the top is that cricoid cartilage. Underneath that, there's another bump called the thyroid cartilage. So we call this hill, valley, then hill again. So this valley in between is known as our cricothyroid membrane, and that is the membrane that we're gonna be cutting. Now, before you cut, always hold the skin taut as that is going to expose that cricothyroid membrane. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is always provide my vertical incision. And as you can see that skin split, it allowed me to start to see that membrane. Now, obviously this is a very sharp scalpel. Please be careful. Of course, I already uh, disinfected that area. Now, in there, we can see that membrane. Take a look, you can see how white it is. That's the cricothyroid membrane that we are going to try to break through. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide a plunge cut. So you provide a little bit of pressure. Once I'm in, this is now when I'm inside the trachea. I now, it is my job to make that hole a little bit bigger so I can fit my tube. Please be careful and don't cut your fingers. Now, one thing that a lot of providers need to know is do not lose this hole. If you lose that hole, there's a chance that you are not going to find it again, depending on the size of the patient's neck, adipose tissue might get in the way. I have friends that have lost this and on calls. So you can use your pinky finger, you can use another tool, maybe a hemostats, maybe a tray cook, something that you have that's with your kit. Now that we have this hole, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my six size 6O tube. It's going to be passed downwards through this hole. Okay, I know my trachea is a little bit cracked, as you can see. Once that's inside, now we're going to inflate with our 10 mLs. I put it perfectly inside that hole there. And now you would go ahead and attempt your ventilations. The only way that you can truly mess this up is if you cut too far down or you don't cut enough, right? Once you feel that pop into the trachea, now you know you're in, you can go ahead and slide down your tube. Just make sure you're securing it with some sort of either tape or other device. And that's it.